Known today for their medical facilities, upper-level Freemasons or Muslim-style fez caps, a logo with a Middle Eastern sword, and a history of secrecy. Who are these guys, and what is their connection to our government and its history? If one travels about the United States, you might notice that every major city has its Masonic temple, from our capital in Washington, D.C., to such out-of-the-way places as Fairbanks, Alaska, and the old town of Tombstone in Arizona. A stroll through most cemeteries will reveal Masonic symbols on many of the headstones dating back to the earliest years of our country. A glance at our currency suggest a mysterious connection with this odd organization. Our national monuments paint a picture of not only intellectual prowess, but of ancient mysteries as well. What started, they claim, as a stone mason's fraternity which guarded the secrets of their craft has become a bizarre, eclectic web of religious ideas all mixed together into an ecumenical soup of deism. Their goal, they claim, is to seek the light or the light of truth. The question is, what is truth? The American Masonic connection can be traced back to England, where in 1717 the first Masonic Grand Lodge was formed in London. Prior to that, history is questionable at best. Many books have been written about the Brotherhood, spinning wild tales of political conspiracy and intrigue. Many claim to reveal dark spiritual connections linked to numerous occult mysteries and even satanic beliefs. Traditionally, Catholics and other denominations have forbid membership to Masons, however, more recently they have taken a more neutral stand. Famous evangelists such as William Booth of the Salvation Army and Charles Finney all spoke out against Freemasonry. The Methodist Church went through a split in 1860 partially due to the Masonic question. In London, one can see a stained glass window in John Wesley's old Methodist Church donated by the local Masons. This gives us some clues to the reasons behind the birth of the Free Methodist Church. They have taken a stand to be free of Masons. Masonic influence on Mormon prophet Joseph Smith can clearly be seen in his theology and later on Brigham Young's followers in establishing their Utah empire. Masonic symbols are clearly seen on their early temples and public buildings. Much of their sacred temple ritual with its blood oaths and penalties was plagiarized from secret Masonic ritual. This is pointed out by ex-temple worker Chuck Sackett in his book What's Going On In There. Our country was founded by a mixed bag of brave and adventurous men and women, and their religious beliefs were as mixed as well. While many were dogmatic Christian Puritans, others held more eclectic beliefs, with deism being the common denominator with the rest of society. Though many were not Christian in the biblical sense, they could endorse the idea that in God we trust, because they were not foolish enough to reject the whole concept of a divine being. They understood what Solomon's father, David, the king of Israel, wrote, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. In true Unitarian fashion, Thomas Jefferson could not come to believe in Christ as the only begotten Son of God. Yet one of his famous quotes is, Indeed, I tremble for my countrymen when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Jefferson had such disdain, however, for the biblical Jesus that he literally clipped out the supernatural from the pages of the Gospels and pasted the story of a human Jesus to blank pages. This work came to be known as the Jefferson Bible and was published at government expense after his death. Secrecy, which may have started with the artistic stonecutters protecting their trade secrets, eventually broadened to become the free and accepted Masons, which accepted anybody and everybody who was a somebody. 
Freemasonry has played a major role in the world of a deist politician in the founding of our country. Thirteen of the 39 signatures on the Constitution were Masons, and many of those who signed the Declaration of Independence as well. Some familiar Masonic names are Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Paul Revere, Peyton Randolph, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, and most of the federal buildings, including the White House and Capitol Building, had cornerstones laid with Masonic ritual, with Masonic paraphernalia placed inside. The streets of D.C. are laid out in Masonic square and compass design. Our Lady Liberty in New York's harbor is the product of French and U.S. exchange. Masonic exchange, that is. A Masonic flag was even taken to the moon. What's that about? One of the most impressive buildings in Washington, D.C. is a monument called the House of the Temple, which is the headquarters of the Southern Supreme Council. It's been that since 1915. Here you can see the library of the Supreme Council, which was first formed by General Albert Pike. He was the Grand Commander of the Supreme Council from 1859 until his death in 1891. One of his great accomplishments was a book entitled Morals and Dogma of the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, which was uh, written in 1871. Because of the secretive Masonic tradition, few people are aware of the true nature of its beliefs. Much of Masonic literature is both contradictory and misleading. For example, within the Masonic temple, there is an altar where the member kneels before a deity the great architect. Yet, even with these obvious religious symbols, most members will deny that Freemasonry is a religion. Their own literature, however, speaks otherwise. Albert Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry states, Masonry is that religious and mystical societies whose aim is moral perfection on the basis of general equality and fraternity, and Freemasonry may rightfully claim to be called a religious institution. Henry Wilson Coyle's Masonic Encyclopedia states, Some think because it, the Lodge, is not a strong or highly formalized or highly dogmatized religion, such as the Roman Catholic Church, it can be no religion at all. But the Church of Friends, that is the Quakers, exhibits even less formality and ritual than does the Masonic Lodge. Freemasonry is a religion, and a religion that is in direct opposition to Christianity. Masons do not respect the Bible as a divine authority, but only a symbol. Coyle, for example, states, The prevailing Masonic opinion is that the Bible is only a symbol of divine will, law, or revelation, and not that its contents are divine law, inspired, or revealed. Now, Albert Pike says, the Bible is an indispensable part of the furniture of a Christian lodge only because it is the sacred book of the Christian religion. The Hebrew Pentateuch in a Hebrew lodge and the Koran in a Mohammedan one belongs on the altar and one of these and the square and compass properly understood are the great lights by which a mason must walk and work. Now this, of course, is a problem, because Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. To say that all religions have light, as in Freemasonry, is to say that all religions have Jesus, which is not true. They may believe in a Jesus, but it is certainly not the Jesus of the Bible. After 9-11, we toured the Masonic House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., the headquarters of the Southern Supreme Council since 1915, and we were shown the altar where a Bible or a Koran is displayed, depending on the event. And the tour guide did not seem to share our concerns at all regarding this obvious contradiction. Mackey's Encyclopedia says, Be assured that God is equally present with the pious Hindu in the temple, the Jew in the synagogue, the Mohammedan in the mosque, and the Christian in the church. In contrast, Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. He did not say he was one of many ways, and many lights, or many truths. Freemasonry views Jesus as a great moral teacher, but not God incarnate. 
Not only does that contradict the Bible, but it contradicts common sense. Since Jesus claimed to be God several times, he must either be a liar, crazy, or what he said he was. There are no other options. Freemasonry also teaches that after death, admittance into the Grand Lodge on high will depend on good works done in this life, not the forgiveness of sins through the substitutionary payment of Jesus Christ. Now this is no small detail, since Jesus said his whole reason for coming into the world was not to teach us, but to die for us. So who is Lucifer to the Masons? I recount an experience I had a few years ago. I visited a large gathering of Freemasons where there was set up a large table with various books and literature for sale. From a book entitled The Lost Keys of Freemasonry by Manley P. Hall on page 48, I read to the fellow manning the table these words, When the Mason learns that the key to the warrior on the block is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step onward and upward, he must prove his ability to properly apply this energy. When I asked if that was truly his belief, I soon found myself being carried out of the building by two rather large and not so gentle men. Some authors, such as Ed Decker, claim this Masonic connection explains where the Mormons got the idea that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. The Bible, however, tells us that Lucifer, because of his pride and rebellion, fell from heaven, and he is the father of lies, the adversary, who will ultimately be cast into hell. The name of the Masonic god, Ja Bulan, the great architect of the universe, is revealed only to the third-degree Masons who elect to be exalted to the Holy Royal Arch, a secret master. Now this compound deity is composed of three separate persons. Ja represents Yahweh, the god of the Hebrews. Bull stands for Baal, or the ancient Canaanite fertility god associated with human sacrifice and occult rituals. And An is Osiris, the ancient Egyptian god of the underworld. The Bible clearly tells us, do not be bound together with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness, or what harmony has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? It is the ultimate insult and blasphemy to put heathen gods on the same level as the God of Israel, much less to try to make them part of the same deity. It is clear from its own writing that Freemasonry is a religion, and it is not to be confused with Christianity. Since the prophets of the Bible condemned the religions that promoted what Freemasonry prides itself in, how is it that we think God will approve of it today? The Bible tells us that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He is our only hope of salvation. Yet when verses are read from the Bible in Masonic rituals, his name is omitted. Why? The Bible gives us the true test for anyone who calls himself a Christian. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Freemasonry rejects every fundamental truth of Christianity. Therefore, no man can truthfully claim to be both a Mason and a Christian. If you are a Mason, now is the time to renounce your secret allegiance to Jabulon and ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. If we are willing to confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus warned the hypocrites of his day, Nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and whatever you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops.